While Westeros, the continent where the majority of the story takes place, is united under one ruler, the eastern continent called Essos has a different ruler for each of its many cities. A few hundred years before the series begins, one civilization was on its way to conquering all of Essos, however. The Dragon Riders of Valyria are from a place called the Valyrian Peninsula. It's located on the southwestern part of Essos, and the peninsula leads into the Summer Sea. North of here is the Painted Mountains, and to the east is the Gulf of Grief and Slaver's Bay. The map you're looking at looks a little different from the height of Valyria's power. What you're looking at is the peninsula's destruction after the Doom of Valyria. Right now, in the current story, this entire region is in ruin and impossible to travel through. In Game of Thrones, the river that Tyrion and Jorah travel through in Season 5 is referred to as the Valyrian Ruins, but this definitely isn't true in the books. Where Tyrion gets attacked by the Stone Men is actually the ruins of the Croin, a place the Valyrians conquered and destroyed long ago. There has always been the mystery of the ruins of Valyria created after the Doom, so it makes sense that the show writers decided to not even mention the Croin and just call it the ruins of Valyria. So before this place was blown up, which I'll get back to a little later in the video, it was just one large landmass and not a chunk of islands scattered around each other. Originally, a few thousand years ago, this land was nothing but the home to sheep herders. These shepherds would eventually find dragons and their eggs within the volcanoes all over the peninsula. There are 14 volcanoes spread across the Valyrian Peninsula. They've been given the name of the 14 flames. The Valyrians claim this is where dragons originate from, but the people of Ashai claim dragons came from the Shadowlands way further east in the world. The shepherds were able to tame the dragons with magic and quickly became this world's superpower with them as their war weapons. The dragon riders went around conquering lands and collecting slaves in order to mine the 14 flames. The peaceful sheep herders turned to evil slave masters. They sent slaves down into the mines for precious metals and many wouldn't return. Valyria already had a warm climate, but the conditions in these mines were torturous. It was always extremely hot and grew hotter the deeper they were forced to dig. When breaking walls, they would sometimes be surprised by steam or boiling water, or even molten rock. But the worst would be coming across worms. Fireworms are essentially wingless dragons. Their fire would leave burnt corpses throughout the mines. The 14 flames were active enough that they used their fires to light the night sky on the Valyrian Peninsula. The slave masters didn't care about how many people they were sending to their graves, because of how much they were making mining and how easy dragons made conquering. They established the capital city, also called Valyria. The city was home to the 40 ruling dragonlord families. The Targaryens were only one of these 40 families, and they weren't even considered very powerful. They all shared similar physical characteristics of silver hair and purple eyes. If the Targaryens alone were able to conquer all of Westeros, just imagine what the other more dominant houses were capable of. The people of the capital city lived in topless towers with all their dragons flying above them. The city would become the world's greatest civilization and the beginning of the Valyrian Freehold. The old empire of Gaius was the superpower of Essos when the Freehold was just starting up, so they were the first to be conquered by the Dragonlords. 5,000 years before the start of the series, a series of battles called the Giscari Wars took place. Every war ended with a victory for Valyria. The dragons and Valyrian steel overwhelmed the Giscari. In the fifth and final war, the capital city of Gis was destroyed. After turning the city into ruins, the dragonlords salted the fields so nothing could grow ever again. The most powerful empire was defeated to the point where their culture and even their language disappeared forever. The colonies that were under the old empire of Gis, like Yonkai, Astapor, Marine, and some colonies in the southern continent called Sotheros, were brought into the Valyrian Freehold. The dragonlords were also creating their own cities. The first colony founded by the Valyrian Freehold was Volantis. It is one of the nine free city colonies and known as the First Daughter. Like Volantis, Tyros started as a military outpost. Lys was a paradise vacation spot for the Dragonlords. Merchant adventurers from the Freehold founded Myr and Pentos. Some religious Valyrians who shared different views compared to the others in the Freehold founded Lorath, Norvos, and Kowar. The last of the free cities is Bravos. Bravos was never a colony under the Freehold. While on ships from Valyria to a new colony, Slaves on board took control of the ships and escaped their masters. They traveled to a distant lagoon that was well hidden by hills and covered with pine trees and the fog that covers this area. The capital city of Valyria and all these cities under the Dragonlords were never considered an empire because it didn't have one ruling emperor, instead it had 40 families. So they got the name the Valyrian Freehold. The nine free cities may have been founded by the Valyrians but were left to rule over themselves and develop their own very different cultures. There's also a city called the Saria that is now referred to as the Lost Free City. In the current story, this place is in ruin thanks to the Dothraki, and they have since renamed it Vos Kadok, which means the City of Corpses. While I've been talking about all the colonies under the Freehold for a while now, 
there are actually some interesting places on the actual Valyrian Peninsula itself, aside from the capital city. There are two nearby cities. The city Oros is considered to be second only in majesty to the capital city Valyria. It was founded by the Freehold, but unlike the free cities throughout Essos that were under the Freehold, Oros doesn't rule itself. Valyrians are sent over to govern this land. Tyria is the other city close by, and has a very similar description to Oros. I don't think it's as extravagant, but it is also founded and governed by Valyrians. Oros and Tyria are separated by the 14 flames. A little north of here is the lands of the long summer. Considering how interesting its name is, it's a shame we don't have any information on this piece of land. The name is almost perfectly the polar opposite of the lands of always winter that you find north of the wall. That's supposedly where the White Walkers originate from. Ice and fire are a huge theme in this series, and it isn't hard to tell since the book series is actually called A Song of Ice and Fire, and not Game of Thrones like the show. That body of water right by here is actually an inland sea called the Sea of Sighs. This is the only body of water in the peninsula. In keeping with the theme of fire, the sea is colored red. Further north is the city Manteris. A small island nearby next to the peninsula is Illyria, and the last city in this region is Tolos. Manteris, Illyria, and Tolos have all been described similarly to Oros and Tyria, being rich and founded by the Valyrians, but also governed by them. Tolos separates itself from the other cities in the Valyrian peninsula by having this reputation for having highly skilled slingers. Slingers are just this medieval type weapon that tosses projectiles. The fighters of Tolos throw lead balls while most others just use stones. Somehow this primitive weapon does some pretty serious damage if it hits someone. These cities are connected to each other the Valyrian roads. These are wide roads, 6 inches off the ground, made from stone fused with dragon fire. Since they are made with dragon fire, they got the name Dragon Roads. They run in a straight line, connecting the cities to make trade a lot more efficient. For centuries, these well-constructed roads have remained unchanged. The Dragon Lords were virtually unstoppable. It took a natural cataclysm called the Doom of Valyria to end their violent conquest. All 14 of the volcanoes erupted at the same time, 400 years before the series begins. The capital was instantly turned to ruins, killing everyone. The lava and smoke were so hot that even the dragons couldn't survive the catastrophe. Somehow the daughter of a Targaryen dragon lord had a vision of the doom and warned her father 12 years prior to their homeland's destruction. They moved their family and five of their dragons to an island in Westeros long before her vision came true. The island the Targaryens located to was Dragonstone. This was the Valyrian's westernmost outpost that they conquered for themselves 200 years before the doom. Funny enough, Dragonstone also has a huge volcano on the island. The Valyrian Peninsula was shattered from where the 14 flames used to be. Earthquakes and exploding mountains also turned the nearby areas to ruin. The lands of the Long Summer and Oros stayed connected to the Essos mainland while Tyria and the capital city of Valyria became islands. Some of the 14 flames were submerged into the water and created the Smoking Sea. The Smoking Sea is impossible to sail through and with no one ever returning from their voyage here, no one knows why. It's believed some of the areas in these waters are still boiling and are also haunted by demons. I'm not sure what that would mean in this story. It's also said to be filled with krakens. A dragon lord named Arion was not on the peninsula when the doom occurred, so as one of the few surviving dragon lords, he named himself the first emperor of Valyria and raised an army. Together with his army, Arion traveled to his home to try to reestablish the freehold, but none of them were ever seen again. What makes his voyage even stranger is that he was flying above his fleet on his dragon and there were 30,000 people under his command. Some people from Volantis also tried and never returned. A Lannister king thought he could return home a very wealthy man if he traveled to the ruins, but he and his Valyrian steel sword were lost. Tywin Lannister's younger brother wanted to try and reclaim their family's ancestral sword, but also went missing. Euron Greyjoy claims to have walked the ruins of Valyria during his time in exile from the Iron Islands. He has since returned home with some powerful Valyrian artifacts, but who knows if he's telling the truth. He's one of the most evil characters who can't be trusted. Since the Doom, the surrounding areas have been drastically affected. Right in the Gulf of Grief is the Isle of Cedars. There were two cities on the island, Gazer and Velos, but both were destroyed by a tsunami that also happened during the Doom. There were a few witnesses at the time, some spearmen on the tallest hill, and some people on this island were out fishing way out of sea. The tsunami was a 300 foot tall wall of water and the only reason the spearmen survived was because on that tall hill, they were stationed in a stone tower to give them shelter. In the current story, the Isle of Cedars has no one living on it, and the animals here aren't afraid of humans. Illyria and Tolos made it out okay, but something strange has happened to Oros, Tyria, and Menteris. Oros and Tyria are cities both in ruin, but somehow have people still living on it. 
The people have gained a bad reputation since the Doom, being known as darker and more evil group of people. Amenteris is the most feared. The city was far enough to stay intact, but the people have allegedly changed. They're known as twisted and monstrous, and Menteris has been called the city of monsters ever since. The only instances where they've been in the current story kind of backs this reputation. When Daenerys requests the help from these people, they send her messengers heads back pickled. And when Tyrion is in Essos, he sees a slave girl from here with two heads. The only other character I can recall in the story with two heads is Maelys the Monstrous, who was this cruel man from a Targaryen branch family that tried to make himself king. He didn't make it very far before being killed by Ser Barris and Selmy. With the people of Manteris being strangely affected by the Doom, it adds to the mystery of this region. The Doom of Valyria could have been a natural disaster or something more. The Valyrians were going overboard with all their mining, but some claim that the only reason the 14 flames didn't erupt sooner was because magic was being used to contain the volcanoes all this time until finally it weakened. Without the freehold in power, chaos broke in Essos for a hundred years, referred to as the Century of Blood. The Dothraki grew very powerful, but no empire has since replaced the Dragonlords of Valyria. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope it cleared up some of the misconceptions between the city of Valyria, the peninsula, and the freehold, which covered a large range of land. Thanks for watching.